All right, so you guys are either going to have to blame or thank Mr. Jose Garcia for telling me about this amp, this Woody 6800-watt amp. Now, I have purchased a Woody amp before and done a video. It didn't turn out so well, but this is actually a monoblock, and they name it here the RP2000.1D, which is actually the model number of a SCAR amp, but we'll find out that is not the actual model number of this amplifier. But at the time of purchase, it was just under 100 bucks. And if you go to Google and do a search for Woody Car Audio, you see Dick Riculous. So we got an idea of what we're going to see with this amp today, right? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, so I took one for the team and ordered the amp. And yeah, it's very weird. It has an American flag on it, but all this Chinese writing. And it's, uh, I'm not even trying to pronounce the name here. But yeah, it's definitely from China. I'm not sure what the American flag is on here for. But anyway... Let's take a closer look at the manual here. And uh, yeah, it even comes with a little certificate. And I'm not really sure what that says. We'll find out maybe when we get it translated. But it has some ratings on here and not a whole lot of other information. Then in the box, you get the amplifier. And here's the amplifier. Very basic look. A classic amplifier design for car audio. You can see the size compared to my hand. We'll get to the dimensions here shortly. And we'll talk about the specs as well. Just an overall shot here, flyover of the amp. And here's the model number I was talking about. It's 8808.1D, which I have no idea where the RP2000.1D comes from. Let's take a look at the rating. 600 watts at 4 ohms, 900 watts at 2 ohms, 1500 at 1 ohm. These are RMS ratings at 1% distortion according to this. Current draw, 300 amps. Minimum load, 1 ohm. Efficiency, greater than 85 percent let's take a look at one side of the amp you see the power protect led we also have inputs and outputs for rcas which is nice for a budget amp then we have the gain control low pass filter 40 hertz to 180 hertz subsonic off to 50 hertz a bass boost frequency of 30 to 80 and a gain from 0 to 12 db so i would just make sure you don't set your low pass filter to 40 hertz and your subsonic to 50 hertz because you might open up a hole in the planet. You big dummy! On the opposite side, we have power inputs and speaker outputs. This is very interesting, my friends. We have dual speaker outputs. This is a mono block. Those are 8 gauge, but you can hook up your dual voice coil speakers easily with this. But check this out. These are one alt inputs for power and ground. Uh, yeah, let's find out if that's really needed. As far as dimensions go, 13.77 inches by 8.66 inches. And the metric equivalence there for those who like it easy. And then for the height, 2.36 inches or 6 centimeters. Now we're going to take the bottom of the amp off and take a look at the guts. But you know I'm going to tease you guys. We're going to do that later in the video. So you got to stick around for that. Let's fire up the good old SMD, the more engineering amplifier dyno. Get ready to run some RMS power output tests. Before we do that, smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you check the video description. Pick up your a Wilson Audio t-shirt and be nice and cool or warm. First up, 4 ohms. Rated 600 watts, 14.4 volts. Can we get to 600 watts? I don't think so, but we got a lot closer than I thought we would. 491, 14.58. Let's reset the dyno here to the uncertified mode and see if we can get to that 600 watts. And no, we're still shy. 516 watts, 14.52 volts. What about dynamically? Can we get to the 600 watt rating dynamically? Let's hold our breath, find out. Don't hold your breath because it ain't going to get there. <laughs> 514, 14.56 volts. So a little bit of a failure based on the ratings. 84% efficient though. That's pretty good for a hundred dollar amp. <laughs> I'm just still shocked. Two ohms mono, it's rated 900 watts at 14.4. Now usually when an amp doesn't do, it's rated at four ohms, it doesn't get any better as we drop the ohms. But as you can see here, it actually did get a little closer. 840 watts, 14.46. This is the certified test up to 1% THD. Now, let's go up to the clipping point and see if we can get that 900 watts. What do you think? 
Any bets? Any takers? It's getting close. 880? 890? Uh, oh! 899 at 14.34. We were right there at 900 watts. the clipping. I'm impressed. But it ain't, it ain't over yet, fellas. It is not over yet. Dynamic RMS power. We easily get that 900 watts plus some more. 14.48. So yeah, I'm starting to smile. If you can tell my voice, getting a little happy here. So you guys can get more excited as we go along. 74% efficient. Yeah, that's about average for class D. Not great, not horrible. Now let's try one ohm where it's rated 1500 watts at 14.44. Can we get there certified? No, unfortunately not. 1277, so just shy of 1300 watts at 14.48 volts. Now let's rewire the dyno here using the touch button controls to go uncertified. Can we get the 1500 uncertified? I don't think so, but we did get over 1400. 1402, 1 ohm, 14.32 at the clipping point of the amplifier. Again, don't forget, this amp was $100. <laughs> Dynamic, check this out. We do bust 1,537 watts, 1 ohm, 14 and a half volts. Budget king right here, my friends. 68% efficient at 1 ohm. So not all that good at one ohm. Now I know what you guys are asking. What about 0.8? Can it do 0.8? Well, we're gonna try it out. Certified, can we get to that 1500 watts at 0.8? Not quite, 1356, but the amp did not go into protect and it handled that load like a boss. So let's try uncertified and see if we can get that 1500 watts. And yes, we do. 1,539 watts right at 14.4, 14.38. What about a little dynamic 40 hertz burst? Check this out, over 1,700 watts. Say it ain't so. 1,728, 14.36. Efficiency is not a whole lot worse than it was at one ohm, 69%. Wow. I'm blown away. So what about these results? Say what is really all I can say here. You can pause it if you want to see. I just showed all these tests and it came shy at four ohms. At two ohms, it did the rated power up to clipping. One ohm, it didn't quite make it unless we got to the dynamic load, but still, wow, for a $99 amp, incredible. I'm sure you guys are going to ask, do it bump dough? Let's find out. Try a couple songs. All right, we have the Woody uh, 6800 watt amplifier here on the test bench, hooked up to the eight inch subwoofers here, wired at one ohm. Let's try a little Pink Panther theme from Boom Tube, see how it sounds. Let's try a little woofer test.
All right, so if you couldn't tell by the video, the amp did good on the subs, but it did notice a slight lack of control to the subwoofer. So just be noted with that. Now let's find out what's inside. Is it a surprise? I don't think so. Let's take off all the screws on the bottom of the amp and take off the bottom panel. And here we can see, oh, it looks kind of familiar. I would say it looks like an audio pipe somewhat. But notice that it looks like Pac-Man or somebody must have got a hold of this board. Why are these two chunks missing out of the board? Doesn't make any sense to me. You can see it here. Looks like somebody just broke off part of the circuit board. I don't know, maybe they use that in a smaller amp or something. But uh, if you, any of you technicians out there know why they would have done this, let us know. As far as the rail caps, 4700 microfarad, 80 volt. And check out the audio pipe OFC wiring. Hmm, I wonder if this amp might be made in the same place. There again is a rail cap, 4700 microfarads, 2200 microfarad, 50 volts. And then for the filter caps, we have 25 volt, 2200 microfarad. And yeah, here is the amp. Here's the guts. Has the two power transformers there. And again, I just think it's funny that part of the amp, it, it just appears like it's missing. Now let's talk about the good stuff with this Woody amp. Obviously an extreme bargain at the time of the video when I purchased it, it was under $100. It's a low ohm beast, which we're going to test some more low ohm tests later. Has a variable subsonic, a variable bass EQ, 1.0 inputs, dual speaker outputs. And did I say it was cheap? Yes, it was under $100 at the time of this video. What about things could be better? Well, it doesn't have a remote bass control. The reliability is unknown, but it looks like an audio pipe or very similar to it. So it's probably okay. Brand stigma, yeah. Price jump, I bet it will. If you want one of these, you better go ahead and pick one up. So there you have it, guys. My test of the Woody 8808.1D. Wow, this was a shocker. Looks like an audio pipe amp. It looks like it's an extreme value. I would go ahead and pick one up if you want it. Reliability is unknown, I don't know, but wow. Again, for a hundred bucks, I'm just very shocked. So thanks again for watching. This is Big D, till next time, I'm out of here. All right guys, so against all odds and against everybody's wishes, psych, you guys wanna see it? Let's drop this baby down low. Can it handle 0.67? Let's find out. Mama said no. All right, Woody, 6,800 watt mono block. Let's drop them ohms down. Try 0.67. Again, this is a resistive load on the dyno, so this doesn't really match up to your speaker loads, but it's fun to see what amplifiers can do. Let's find out if this thing's got a protection circuit or if it's just going to give us more power. Let's find out. 40 hertz, 0.67. All right, 1938 watts at 0.67. Wow. All right, is it possible this cheap $100 Woody amp can do 0.67 certified? I don't know. Let's find out. 40 hertz. Here we go. Finger on the trigger in case it starts smoking. All right, 1478 at 14.48. What about half an ohm certified? <laughs> um, should we do the dynamic, I mean the uncertified? Yeah, let's do the uncertified. All right, uncertified 40 Hertz, 0.67 for the Woody. Sixteen oh nine, fourteen point three six. All right, I'm just uh, a little bit in shock here. All right, so it handled point six seven. No way it can handle half an ohm. Hundred dollar amp, right? Let's find out. Woody sixty eight hundred watt not mono block, half an ohm certified. Is it possible that this hundred dollar amp at the time of this video? can do half an ohm resistive on the dyno, which very few amplifiers have ever been able to do, honestly. And I don't know, let's find out. Hopefully we don't blow the amp up so I can do some more tests, but let's just see. Here we go, 40 Hertz, half an ohm, dynamic, I mean certified. Four, 
1458, 14.44, it did it. I am blown away. Let's try half an ohm, dynamic burst, 40 hertz, see if it can do it. Let's find out, here we go. I cannot believe it did the entire test. 2,129 watts of 14.42. I am just shocked. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn.